जय हिंद वेलकम ऑल सो दिस इज क्लास ऑफ फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इंजीनियरिंग विथ स्टार्टिंग विथ यूनिट टू हियर वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट बाईपोलर जंक्शन ट्रांजिस्टर्स एंड फील्ड इफेक्ट ट्रांजिस्टर्स सो वेलकम टू लेक्चर वन हियर विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट बाईपोलर जंक्शन ट्रांजिस्टर्स सो वी टॉकिंग अबाउट बी जे टी टाइप्स वर्किंग ऑफ बी जे टी बी जे टी कॉन्फिग्रेशन सो uh let's talk about the transistor construction there are two types of transistors plp and npm that depends on the majority of charge carriers that is within the transistor first of all if we talk about why the name bjt bipolar junction transistor because here the majority and minority charge carriers both electron and holes they contribute in the current conduction so basically the, the bjts are of two types npn and pnp and the terminals are labeled as emitter base and collector the npn bjt consists of three semiconductor regions that is the emitter region here the emitter region is of n type the base region is of two type uh, p type and the collector region is of n type so i would draw a symmetry for this so this is how can draw the emitter region base region and the collector region so these are basically sandwich of uh, the base region is sandwich between emitter and collector so this is simply semiconductors um like n type semiconductor where p is sandwiched in between two n type semiconductors and in pnp the n type uh, semiconductor is sandwiched between two p type semiconductors so if we closely observe the junction between emitter and base that is it simply looks like a pn junction diode where an n type semiconductor is geographically in contact with the p type physically in contact with the p type semiconductor right and this also looks like a semiconductor diode where p type semiconductor is forming a junction with n type semiconductor so it looks like that there are two pn junction diodes lying in a way that they look like they are in series but practically their working isn't like that right because when these two diodes are in contact with each other working of each diode is not independent of the working of the other diode right so this has three regions as i said emitter base and collector and the type of doping in the emitter the name npn and pnp is given as per the type of doping if in the emitter majority charge carrier is n type and in the collector also majority charge carrier is n type and in the base majority charge carrier is p type then it is called npn or vice versa is the name which is pnp pnp bjt consists of three semiconductor regions the emitter region here is p type the base region is n type and the collector region is p type again so if we see the transistor construction this is how it looks like this is pnp this is npn this first of all we need to learn the symbol for it the for pnp we can see the symbol this is the symbol for a transistor where emitter is shown downwards collector and base is the central region so this direction this arrow direction shows the flow of majority charge carriers which here in emitter region is electrons right so here the arrow is inwards and in npn the arrow is outwards so with these three terminals it is shown emitter base and collector pnp here also emitter base collector npn so this is pnp transistor this is npn transistor now when in unbiased condition it will act like a insulator that depends there will be very uh, small flow of current so uh, it can conduct so a transistor can act as an insulator or a conductor depending on 
the biasing right so when i say we talk about biasing of transistor that means it is provided with some external battery okay right? so in pnp transistor if i what i um, what i need to do is the emitter base junction has to be forward bias and the collector base junction has to be reverse bias in order to make it operate in active region so we can see here if it is an n pin kind of configuration then uh, this emitter base junction will be forward bias when this is connected to the positive side of the positive terminal of the battery and if i talk about the base collector junction then the collector in order to be reverse bias it has to be connected to the negative terminal of the battery or external supply which we apply right so um, we can see with the potential supplied here positive negative with the sign of the potential of the battery we can see how batteries applied to it right this being the emitter portion this being the base this being the collector so in active region when your em what is active region when your emitter and base is uh, forward bias and collector base junction is reverse bias then the transistor is uh, supposed to be working in a mode where we can actually get the amplification right so first thing we learned about transistor is it can act as a conductor or an insulator based on the biasing another thing it can act as a switch or an amplifier right a simple pn junction diode acts as a switch uh based on the biasing when it is forward forward biased it acts as a non switch when it is reverse biased it acts as an off switch so here we have two junctions and three terminal so simply a transistor is a two junction three terminal device where semiconductors uh two different kind of semiconductors are arranged in a configuration making it a pnp or npn kind of configuration right similar thing applies to npn we can see in order to make the emitter base junction forward bias here the emitter has to be connected to the negative side of the battery and in order to make the base collector junction reverse bias the collector which is having majority charge carriers n kind that is electrons it has to be connected to the positive terminal of the battery right so here this configuration shows both the pnp and npn working in its active region and in active region your transistor actually works as an amplifier so most of the time we use our bjts for amplification right so although fets are uh, most widely used but bjt has got still its application in electronics industry right so this is about the very basics of bipolar junction transistor as i earlier said why bipolar here both type of charge carrier constitute a forming current right so by applying potential we observe the value of current whenever it is applied with some uh, like input current we can see the voltage amplification that we observe right so we can see it as a switch we can see it as a we can see it working as an amplifier as well now the next thing if we talk about the doping level and area of emitter base collector if i talk about the physical construction uh emitter base and collector which is the large which is uh, occupying the largest area which is the smallest which is the thinnest one and which is moderate in size so if i compare it on the basis of size collector occupies the maximum area followed by emitter followed by base base is thinnest right so size of collector is the maximum reason why collector has the maximum size because electrons ejected from emitter uh, i'm taking the case of npn electrons ejected from emitter has to be collected at collector and because of this flow of electrons there will be conduction of current and there will be voltage amplification 
and there has to be a larger area for collection of electrons. So collector constitutes the maximum area followed by emitter and base is the central region which your majority charge carriers has to pass. So it is thinnest in geometry, right? So this is the size uh, comparison. And now if I talk about doping level comparison, If I talk about doping level comparison, then the majority charge carriers has to be flowing quickly and very fast. So emitter has to be most heavily doped, just followed by collector, followed by base. The central region has to be uh, doped in the slightest mode so that it opposes, uh, so that it offers minimum resistance to the flow of charge carriers, right? So the base has to be thinnest, the base have to be most lightly doped. Highest doping is of emitter at is has, it has to eject electron when I'm talking in respect of NPL. Emitter has to be heavily doped followed by the collector followed by the base. So base is the most lightly doped material and the thinnest part, right? The transistor consists of two PN junctions, the emitter base junction and the collector base junction and how it operates, we discussed, right? Now, if I talk about the construction, emitter, the portion like whatever we discussed like we are going to detail uh, discuss this in detail emitter is the portion on one side of the transistor that supplies charge carriers that could be either electrons or holes to other two portions true the emitter is a heavily doped region true emitter of pnp transistor supplies this is an analogy with so if i'm talking about pnp then the emitter will be possessing maximum number of holes. So it supplies whole. The PNP transistor supplies whole charges to its junction with the base. Similarly, the emitter of the NPN transistor supplies electrons. Supplies free electrons to its junction with the base. Right? Collector, it is the portion on other side of the transistor that is the side opposite to the emitter that collects the charge carriers that is either electrons or hole. If it is NPN then collector would be collecting electrons. If it is PNP then collector would be collecting holes. The doping level of the collector is in between heavily doped, uh, heavily doped emitter and lightly doped base. True. It is uh, moderately doped. Emitter is heavily doped and a base is lightly doped. If I talk about base, it is the middle portion which forms two PN junctions between the emitter and the collector. The base of transistor is thin as compared to emitter and is highly doped portion. The function of base is to, so base plays a very important role in the uh, working of BJTs. Base actually manages the flow of charge carriers because everything has to pass through the base. So it 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 controls the flow of charge carriers, be it electrons or be it holes. Now, modes of operation. There are two junctions. What what do we mean by mode? Whether my uh, BJT is working in cutoff mode or active mode or saturation mode that depends on the kind of biasing that we provide to the junctions, right? There are two junctions in bipolar junction transistor. Each junction can be forward or reverse bias independently, true? Thus, there are different modes of operation. Now, this is my emitter base junction. If I draw here the emitter the base and the collector this junction this is called emitter base junction this is called a collector base junction right 
if the emitter base junction and the collector base junction both are reverse biased then it is in cut off mode it is non working now the mode which is useful to us is the active mode where your emitter base junction is forward biased and collector base junction is reverse biased here your uh, amplifier uh, sorry vjt is working in for uh, in active mode when we make both the junctions in forward bias then the bjt comes in saturation mode it is working at the peak and this is the region where we do not exploit the properties of a bjt so we make it operate in the active mode what is forward active emitter base junction forward bias collector base junction reverse bias the bjt can be used as an amplifier in active region bjt can be used as an amplifier in cut off when both junctions are reverse bias in the situation there is nearly zero current and transistor behaves as an open switch so transistor has two function work as a switch or work as an amplifier here it works as a open switch in saturation mode both junctions are forward bias large current flows large amount of current flows with a small voltage you small apply slightest voltage large flow of current it goes into i mean with the voltage the current usually rises like this but in cut, in saturation region uh, there is no further increase if i talk about operation of a pnp transistor in active mode in forward bias junction of pnp transistor let's see for for the time being we consider the uh, emitter base junction is forward bias in case of npn and this we keep open for a while uh, for our understanding let's see as this is n sorry this is pnp kind the majority charge carriers here would be holes so represented by positive sign and there is slight presentation of a uh, slight presence of your negative these are minority charge carriers which are somehow present in this region as well this is the n region n region will have maximum negative electrons so we can see more number of negative signs and a uh, few number of positive signs present present here so this is the depletion region what happens when we provide forward biasing so this being the p side this should be connected to the positive side of the battery in order to make it uh, in order to uh, make it um, uh, forward bias the p side has to be connected to positive side of the battery and so this is the positive so here the battery uh, applied across emitter and base it is represented as vee right this is forward bias junction of pnp transistor now if i check the reverse bias and and this has to be the uh, collector base junction has to be reverse bias so now we check so this is my pnp kind of so this will be reverse bias when battery to the p side negative is connected if to the p side negative terminal of the battery is connected then it will be called as reverse bias so same battery applied here is represented as vcc so your vee is applied in a way that it is forward bias vcc is applied in a way that it is reverse bias this is when it is in active region now with the external sources vee and vcc connected as shown now both the connections are shown in same diagram here vee forward bias this reverse bias what actually happens as this positive will be uh, here how current the direction of current can be uh, uh, shown as opposite to that of flow of electrons or same to that of flow of holes as this is positive portion this is p this will repel holes right and direction of current is that of uh, is similar to that of holes and opposite to that of electrons so if holes are moving in this direction 
the current can also be shown in this direction right here what happens this is the p side and which is connected to negative side of the battery this will attract holes and when it is attracting holes the flow of current will be following the flow of holes as it is opposite to that of electron but similar to that of flow of holes currents in a transistor so you can see so whatever ie flows here uh current because of its property it will be divided in the arms so ib a portion of current will flow in this arm which is represented as ib its direction is like this and the rest goes like ic so we can easily say that i equals to ie equals to ic plus ib so these are the current relations the collector current is comprised of two current now uh by the time it reaches the collector we have to see how much is the collector current and what it is composed of the collector current is composed of the majority charge carriers and a slightest amount of current will be because of the minority charge carriers so the majority charge because current because of the majority charge carriers is represented by ic and because of the minority carrier charge carriers there will be slight amount of current which is represented as ico the minority current is called the leakage current here this is called as leakage current current due to minority charge carriers is not considered right so this is called as leakage current and is given by the symbol ico ric current with the emitter terminal open so this is the basic configuration of how your bjt operates now there are different modes like uh, there are a uh, different configuration of your uh, bjts like we can keep the base part common and see how current and voltage relations are lying so here uh, here is a small thing that i would um, explain here there are three different configurations in which your transistor operate common base configuration common emitter and common collector configuration we will take this up in the next lecture so these are the references that i have used thank you